Hello, everybody, and welcome to my presentation. Um, I'm Cole Bassett. I am a third year athletic training student at Missouri State University. Uh, today, I'm going to be walking you through a treatment plan that I came up with for uh, an athlete that I've been working with. Um, I'll get into some further details about his injury here in a second um, and kind of his goals and how we're going to get him back to the level of activity he wants to be at. So let's go ahead and get started. So some of the patient background we have. Uh, he's a 25-year-old male college student. Uh, he plays on an intramural basketball team. Uh, he got landed on uh, about a week ago by two different players while he was diving for a loose ball. Um, each one landed in, on him uh, in contact with the ground. Uh, and as a result of that, he has a sprained left ankle and a right triceps contusion uh, and muscle strain. Um, like I said, he's a weak post-injury. And so it's a good time to start working him into some rehab measures. Um, so let's go ahead and get into his goals. He wants to return to his previous level of competition. He's a really active guy and friend ankle. Um, he is not able to play at all currently. And so he wants to be pain free at the end of his treatment plan. And he would like to have his full range of motion back um, and gain strength to help this or prevent this from happening again. Uh, so we're going to try and work in towards that. So there are four different areas I'm going to cover um, with exercises in this treatment plan, and that's range of motion and stretching, strength, balance and stability, and power and agility. So for the ankle, um, I'll cover an initial exercise that I've come up with, and whether or not it's too hard for him, I've created an alternate exercise um, that he can put in its place. So for the range of motion and stretching, the starting exercise I have is an up, down, left, right movement, just simply activating those dorsiflexors and plantar flexors, um, eversion and inversion muscles, um, trying to get him engaged, um, seeing what his pain level is at just with the simple activation of those muscles. Um, if that's too hard, we can regress him to that same movement, but assisted with a towel. Um, this will help him to get into a full range of motion without necessarily having to activate the muscle as intensely, um, and that will help control his pain in that uh, activity. So if the initial is too easy, we can progress him to something harder um, using more fine motor movements, and that's called ABCs. Um, I call those ABCs. Um, so as you can see in the picture, he can use his t uh, big toe and draw out um, the alphabet in the air and just get some fine motor control back in his ankle and practice those several times a day. Um, and for strength, and that starting exercise I've come up with is just a normal body weight squat. Um, most people know uh, the routine for a squat. Um, I like him to get as low as possible, getting uh, the max amount of dorsiflexion in that he can. Um, and then we will see what his baseline is with those, uh, whether we need to progress or regress. Um, the regression I came up with is just a, a calf raise, um, like a normal, they could be called toe ups, um, just raising up, uh, activating that gastroc, um, and getting some plantar flexion worked in as well. Uh, if the initial squat is too easy, then I would have him um, implement a three second hold at the bottom of each squat, uh, just to kind of increase the muscle activation and the stability and strength of those muscles as well. For the balance and stability portion, um, AirX pads um, are an amazing tool for this. Uh, I've used them several times before uh, working on balance and stability of ankle and ankle sprains. Um, so for the starting exercise, I'd have him stand with both feet on an AirX pad. It just provides a little bit of instability uh, compared to the the stable ground underneath it. Um, two feet together on the AirX pad, hands on his hips, and close his eyes. Um, if any of you are familiar with the FMS uh, testing or the BESS scale, um, this is exactly how they test balance and stability in the BESS. Um, and so it's a great way to, by practicing those exercises, better your scores in those areas. So I would have him stand on the pad. Closing the eyes is a key thing. Um, really focuses on proprioception and activating those muscles to maintain its balance, even if you can't see. Uh, if that's too hard, we can regress back to one leg on the solid ground. Um, one leg is still, and I want it to be his injured leg on the ground, I should note. Um, 
just trying to activate those flexors, um, locking in the stability and just reassurance that his um, his balance is still there, and we're going to improve on that just so that he is stronger and ready to get back into his uh, his sport. Uh, because basketball is lots of planning and pivoting, and balance is going to be key for him. So we'll have him do one foot, the injured foot, on the solid ground. Same thing, hands on hips, eyes closed. Um, that'll be a little bit easier because the Air X pad won't be swaying him back and forth. Um, so just slightly a regression. Uh, and then for our progression, uh, if the initial is too easy, we can attempt this. This would probably come a week or two into the recovery because those muscles are going to be pretty weak and uh, probably going to have a lot of pain still um, before we can do this, um, have that kind of motor control. But just the injured foot only on the Air X pad, and this is very difficult to do with your eyes closed. Um, even uninjured people have hard times doing it. But if the previous is too hard, then we'll we'll give it a shot and give him um, the opportunity to try it this way. Um, then power and agility, um, starting exercise I'd like to do. And again, these all build on each other. Um, the criteria I want to see for moving on from the starting exercises I gave him to a progression, uh, I want to see pretty much no pain. Um, pain is an indicator that we're doing something beyond what the body is comfortable with in that step of the rehab program. Um, small amounts of pain uh, I'd probably be okay with, but nothing extreme. I don't want anything causing him pain. Um, and so that would be the main criteria for moving on. Um, so for this, this is probably pretty late in the rehab program because this is a lot of explosive movements and landing hard forces on those ligaments that got sprained. And so we want to take it nice and gradual, getting him back to activity. So for power and agility, I'm having to just do some simple jump squats. Um, same as the squats I had to do before, the bodyweight squats, but when he rises back to standing, I want him to explode into a jump and then land and then re repeat um, for the sets and reps I have. Um, if that's too hard, we can go to uh, running stairs. This is a great way to activate a lot of the same muscles, um, but in a much more controlled way than explosive jumping and landing. Um, the stairs are great for that. For progression, if that's uh, too easy for him, um, we're going to do some jump roping. Um, this is a great way to get explosiveness, power and agility back into those ligaments of the ankle. Um, Again, this may be much later in the rehab program, but I want to get him back to this as soon as possible. Okay, for the elbow, um, he has a lot of tricep strain, um, lots of pain, and just lack of range of motion, getting full extension in that. So we're going to work on activating those muscles. Um, so this initial exercise for strengthening, or stretching, excuse me, and range of motion, um, kind of a dynamic stretch. Um, with the arm bent at 90 degrees, like in the picture, that muscle that a partial stretch already and just simply pushing down into the table uh, activating that muscle while it's in stretch will work towards elongating that the triceps heads and uh, getting back his full extension and flexion uh, that's too much um, just having his arm up to the side um, and going through full extension and flexion just to work on that range of motion and stretch the muscle out because um, it's probably locked up from um, the strain it had on it um, to progress, we can do an overhead tricep stretch, just a little bit more of a, a difficult position to put the tricep in after that injury. Um, do as often as possible and comfortable. Um, again, we don't want any serious pain with these. Um, for strength, I'll, we can do an overhead uh, weight press. It doesn't have to be a kettlebell. Any light weight will do. I said about 10 pounds in his plan. Um, do, as, do it as comfortable. Um, just encouraging the contraction of those triceps. Uh, a regression would be another great time to use the pushing into the table. Um, just again, the dynamic stretching and activation of that muscle. A progression, this could be pretty close with the overhead weight presses we had, um, but a modified push up is a great way to get those full dynamic movement, uh, movements in. For balance and stability, uh, a high plank is great. Just Focusing on motor control and stability within the arms being locked out. This is a great way to do that. Um, a regression, we could modify that again. Um, bring the contact points down to the knees instead of the feet. That just makes it a little bit easier. and There's less weight to hold up with the, the injured uh, elbow and tricep. 
a progression for that would be total shoulder touches, excuse me. Um, just adding a little bit of variability to the movement will increase the difficulty. Then for power and agility, a um, medicine ball throw while laying on your back is great. Um, this again will be a later emphasis in the rehab plan because we want to get that stability um, and just original strength back before we get to power and agility. Um, throwing it as hard as you can to the ceiling and catching it, um, great way to work on explosiveness in the, the arms once those muscles are healed. Uh, then we have a, a regression for that would be just a horizontal same movement. Um, you don't have to throw the ball, but just hold it and press it out as fast as you can, working on the activation of those muscles. Uh, and then a progression would be uh, often referred to as a plyometric push-up. Um, just use one hand on the medicine ball and do push-ups with alternating hands between each rep. And this is a great way to activate those muscles and work on agility and power. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you uh, may be able to use some of these rehab measures in uh, the future, and I look forward to, to the next video. Thank you.